Hello and welcome to my second tutorial in my series. Today we're going to be looking at timing effects to music. And this is the example, and all I've done at the moment is timed the scale of the text to the music beats. And this is what it should look like. Okay, so I've created a new project and I've imported my music. So I'm just going to click and drag this down to create a new composition. And it's important to make sure your composition size is correct. Now what I want to do is if I click on this little down arrow and go audio again here and waveform, I can then see the waveform of my audio. And I know on this audio when I want to cut it, but you might have to look at your audio to work out when the cut points need to be. And an easy way to cut this is to go up to edit, split layer, and then just delete this second new layer that's been created. Okay, so there's my audio. The next step is to create a text layer. So I can right click down here, new text layer. And again, as usual, I'm just going to have my name. Now what we need to do is, at the moment we've just got our audio just as an audio file text. The problem is we've got to now convert our audio file into some kind of keyframe so our effects can use it. So what we do for this, thanks to After Effects who created a feature for this, if you go up to Animation, Keyframe Assistant, you can convert audio to keyframe. So if you click on this, you'll see another layer has been added. If you look it's called Audio Amplitude. And then if you look on the effects, and down on there here, you see that you've got the left channel, the right channel, and both channels. So you can start off by deleting the left and the right channels at the moment because we're not actually going to use those. And if you go down on this little arrow, you can see you've got a slider, and these are all the keyframes created by the volume of the music. Next, all we have to do is apply our effect to work in time with this audio slider. So how we do this is if we create down on this text layer, and then go transform, and then we just find the scale. If you hold down Alt and click here, you see they come up with these extra options. And this one little here is a pick width. And what this does is it allows whatever the number that these are to be, instead of you writing them in, you can link it to another layer. So if we pick whip this slider, left slider, then just click off. Our text you now see is in time with the music. So we can just render this. Problem with this is that when the music is nothing, the text has actually disappeared. So what we now have to do is click on this both channel slider and open it in graph editor. So if we open up the graph editor you can see these are the peaks of the volume, so each beat is a peak, or the volume peaks. At the moment our graph starts at zero, but because we don't want our text to be nothing when we have no sound, what we have to do is select all of these points, and then drag this bottom mark up, so you can start to see that our text now starts at a range. If you wanted the movement to be more extreme, you could drag the top up, and if you wanted it to be even bigger, you could drag the bottom up. The starting position to be bigger, you could drag the bottom up. So now if we render this. You see that's much more like what we want. The other thing is that because of the way that After Effects works, it isn't just limited to scale. If we remove, if we click off this graph editor, and remove this. So now we're back to nothing. We can apply other effect, effects that use this audio level. So now if we go effects, let's see, what about a blur and sharpen? So if we apply Gaussian blur, you now go down to the effects pull down underneath your text layer, Gaussian blur, click on this pull down. And see this blurriness. If we click Alt again, so we get the pick width, 
and link this to the slider, you now should see that it becomes blurry in terms of the music. Now obviously for blur, you actually want when there's no music to become, you actually want to re-edit this so it goes back down to zero. But you now see that the text will become blurry and in this almost look like it's flashing in time of the music. Anyway, I think that concludes our, this tutorial. Hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.